I just am curious, like what gets you? Cause like you have a really sweet way about you, you know, but, um, like what, what gets you? That's so funny. You bring this up yesterday in the long answer to the question. Um, yesterday the maintenance guy had to come in and fix something in my apartment. And he was like telling me, he's like, Hey, like, I don't have this part. Like I have to run back downstairs. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. Like, he was like, you're not upset. I was like, it's life. Like, what am I going to be upset about? Like, it's just, it just is what it is. And he's like, you are such a nice person. And I was like, oh, we're just like, there's no point in like stressing about a lot of stuff. Like, this is all not going to matter in like 10 minutes, 10 years from now. Like, what am I stressed about? Um, so to answer your question, that's definitely a question I always ask myself. Like, will this matter in five minutes, five weeks, five months, five years? That's like my number one check-in before I like get overly upset about anything. Um, it takes a lot to make me mad. I can usually brush things off, but I know that's come with a lot of therapy, a lot of journaling, a lot of like self-work that I've done. Um, but things that get me mad is, are the things I work to dismantle. Racism, ableism, phobias. Um, that's why you do what you do. That's why I do what right? I do. And, and you know, I, I love but hate that trope of like, when you find what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. I'm like, no, my job is hard. Like, <laughs> I work for myself and sometimes I don't like my boss. Like, some days I'm like, do I want to get up and do this? I'm like, I, but then I say like, I'm so lucky to work for myself. Get up and do it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot that makes me mad. Um, I think the, f I know that the first thing that makes me really mad is just the constant exhaustion I feel of stress. You and I were just talking about stress off mic. I'm like, I'm always stressed. And I think it's just come, it comes from never feeling safe in this country and having to have that conversation with a lot of friends, especially over the last few years. Um, my best friend Shelby and I travel a lot. She does travel um, blogging and food blogging for her full-time jobs. And so I've been really lucky to be able to go with her, but we travel all over and you know, we traveled to parts of Texas and I tell him like there, I would not go to this place without you. And we've had to talk about what that means and her privilege. She's white of, you know, what her whiteness allots me when I'm with her. Um, and so it, I think it, for me, it's just that navigation of constantly have to worry about my safety, even when I'm home. And, you know, I live in a very posh apartment, um, in a gated apartment, um, and still like knowing that like whenever I see a police officer at my apartment, I still get nervous because I'm always just like, oh, my God, I know what the police have meant in this country for black people whenever I'm driving, even if I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm just constantly anxious about that. And so if, for me, it's just the constant nav navigation and feeling sort of on edge, like I'm never super relaxed, um, which is terrible for my blood pressure. I know my doctor is so mad at me. Um, but thinking that's probably the top one of just. No matter where I am, people are going to see me make an assumption, no matter what. And I can, you know, I've had places who people have looked at me and then I go on stage and speak and then their demeanor completely changes. Um, I've had people who say that I am only where I am because I've gotten lucky or for people who I know. And I'm like, I'm very big on like working my ass off. Like I have never had a handout in my life. Um, but. I know people see me and who I'm connected with and just assume that they've gotten me to where I am. I'm like, I've been doing this work since I was five. Like before I knew myself, I was doing this work. Right. And so it's just that it's how people discount me in order to make themselves feel better. It's how people discount me in order to push this sort of near narrative around black women. Um, and yeah, just the societal pressures of like all these things I have, I'm quote, supposed to do or be in order to be palatable. And I'm like, I hate that. Like just the the constant thinking about my safety and what I look like and not like even aesthetically wise. It's just like if I want to run out and get gas and sweatpants and just not think about it. But then knowing that like an elderly white woman will make an assumption about me because she sees me. And then what does that mean for other black women who are, and, and, you know, and I understand like that's my anxiety talking, um, but also knowing that it's very real for a lot of people. And so those are, those are probably the top ones of it's less about things. Cause like I can get past things. It's mostly about interactions um, and responses to me. Yeah. That's really well said. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just, want so bad for those things to change you know this is why i do what i do and i and i tell I'm people glad. all the time like my my top two things in life is are if someone sees me and i give them permission to try something 
they never would have thought of trying before. That's all I really need in life. Um, and that I just want everyone to feel as free as I do. Like even with all of the stuff I just talked about, I am so proud of myself for having done the work to be able to both like and love myself and not need outside validation, which I know is such a big deal. Comment and tell me your thoughts and please subscribe to the channel for all things to uplevel your life and increase your shine efficiently and through better habits, mindset shifts and embracing your own power. And if you want to hear the whole episode, it's available wherever you find podcasts.